Hi, welcome back to West Coast Geeks. I'm your host, Joaquin. How we doing today, people? So, today's video, as you can see, is uh, Into the Borderlands, 5th edition, or Keep on the Borderlands, is the way I knew it, B2. Also, as you can see, I have the Return to the Keep on the Borderlands, the 25th anniversary. And in front of you is a setup from the Wilderness ter Terrain that I didn't really get to include in the video before because that video is running pretty long and I'm, I try to keep some of these short. So I have just concluded playing or being the DM of uh, Into the Borderlands and I haven't had a chance to play D&D probably in like or be a DM in like over 10 years. Like I stopped right after third edition. And so I missed fourth edition. And even when fifth edition came out, I really didn't get a chance to play or didn't really want to play. I had other things going on. So last year, I really started to pick up Dungeons and Dragons again. Now I've always been a DD and d fan. And I usually read every edition I even bought some fourth edition stuff I just couldn't you know I just wasn't feeling it but when I found out that they were going to be making uh, B2 into the borderlands and to convert it to fifth edition I was like all in so I got some friends together to play and I've recently, I bought these wilderness maps right after we were almost like done with the campaign. So I've combined both aspects of Return to Keep on the Borderland along with Into the Borderland. I keep wanting to say the Keep on the Borderland. I, I know they have Into the Borderlands right in front of me, but I just thought I'd just do a short video just talking about what's coming up. So now that this campaign is over... I'm going to be doing my own little animated style um, show. So I'm an artist. So I don't know whether I'm going to be doing it more like Puffin Force, which is hilarious. I just got done watching it in one of his videos. Where I just want to tell stories, uh, whether I've been a player or my many years of DMing. And hopefully you can get some tips or at least see my mistakes and be like, oh, I can improve on that. So that's the purpose of these videos, just to help players out and hopefully just to entertain people. So with the wilderness tiles here, instead of just having your grid, right, and they're camping, at least this way, you can ask them how they're setting up. And, you know, there's, there are plenty of tiles, but, um, you know, one person could be designated, well, I'm going to sleep, going to sleep, and... This is how they're watching the camp, right? And they could have other things set up. And just to have these little tiles out there, I think just... And along with um, these figures, just helps the game a lot visually. So when... Especially when you come into combat. Now, you don't need... You don't need these tiles. You don't even need these figures. I mean, I grew... I started playing back in... Um, when I was like eight years old, so I'm going to tell my age, so 1980, that's when I was first introduced into Dungeons and Dragons. And I had a great time. I might have even been younger, but I want to say I was at least eight. So I remember seeing this classic cover right here, and I was just so intrigued by it. And at this point, I'm kind of developing that I'm an artist, so I'm starting to try to do my best to copy this art. And I got to say, as a kid, I probably drawn this picture oh, 20, 25 times easily, easily. I think the artwork on here is um, has a really classic art where, as you can see, on to return of the keep, you know, now we're talking, this is like 2000. Let's see if I can pull that without that crumbling down. It's got a, you know, 
everybody looks in perspective. And I'm not knocking the original art because I do like the, the flow of it and especially the use of colors. But this just looks more realistic. So if you were getting into D&D &D around 2000 and your DM was like, okay, um, we're going to do Return to the Keep of the Borderlands, which you don't even need to get tell them the name of the adventure they're doing. You just start jumping in and describing it. That's a cool image. But for me, seeing this just brings back so many memories. And what I also like about uh, Into the Borderlands is they also give you Search to the Unknown. So you got the opening classic art, which is the cover of the original. And they give you both versions. Uh, let me move this now. I'll bring this a little bit closer. Hold on a second. I'm going to have to tilt up my camera so you guys can see this. And in the back is my screensaver, which is Tiamat. I mean, because Tiamat looks cool. I remember we tried to fight her in one campaign, but I'll keep that for another day. So you get um, the original versions of it, and then the second printing of it. And then we go into chapter four, which is the original keep on the border lamb. And I remember when we would um, fight certain creatures, like he would just go into the book and foreshadow it and be like, well, you're fighting the owlbear. But it's funny because in this scene right here, the owlbear is in a dungeon, but in the uh, module, it's actually in a cave. So I, even as a kid, I'm like, well, why is that in, in the dungeon and not in the cave? And I'm just thinking that they looked, either the artist forgot or this was just some images that they had drawn and the artist just made a werebear in a dungeon because typically it was dungeons. And then the other artwork that I always loved was this. The Mad Hermit. And depending on how the DM rolled with him, role played him, sometimes he'd be helpful. And other times, you know, bad things would happen because he was a mad hermit. And I always thought that was cool art. I like the grin. Again, I've drawn that a few times. And as you can see, there are my notes coming out because they converted it. And the other artwork was this. So when I bought my when I bought my box set, it did not have this artwork, which I always thought was so cool. The Minotaur just chomping down, num num num, eating his turkey leg, which is supposed to be a person. Whoa! Don't want to break this because I use that for my comic books. So that's it. Just a short little video stating that. Um, I'm going to be trying to do my best to start developing um, this story because that's basically what this campaign is. It's, it's, their, it's my player's story and I want to share that with you and the fun stories that happen during this um, module or adventure. I mean, they don't call them really modules anymore now. It's all adventures, but I'm old school, baby. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Just to let you know what I've been up to for today. Because of the um, coronavirus, I am fortunate enough to be here at Around the Table. And I'm in the back filming by myself. And occasionally helping Tim, the owner, out. Um, doing little things to help him while we're going through these trying times. And if you see this video later on, six months, a year, or whenever... Just know that there was a time, well, anybody who a year or two or now is going to should know about this event. Try to like, trying to 
make this event seem like it's going to be, it's going to go down to history books. That's for sure. I mean, sorry, that just went off there. Didn't mean to. So that's it. Just want to do a video talking about what's going to come. And um, I'm really pumped up about this. I'm an artist and I'm going to be sketching these player characters and I'm going to be trying to tell these stories and either um, black and white or maybe even a few of them in like pastels as I tell the story. So that'll do it, people. Sorry about rambling. You guys take care. If you're new to the channel, hello. Hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment below. Peace.